Welders. Paul here from Adventures in Welding. This is episode number 77. And Adventures in Welding is brought to you by our buddies at Eastwood. Check them out for all your welding needs. Today we're going to take a look at welding some stainless steel. So hang on, here we go. Alright guys, we are going to weld up some 304 stainless steel. It is 60 thousandths thick. And since I don't have a purge box, we're going to do it without a purge. But we're not going to get any sugaring on the back side. Because what I've got here is an inch thick chunk of aluminum. We're going to use that as a backing strip. And we've got our 304 stainless clamp down there real good. We're going to be welding this with the number 17 torch with a 332nd 2% thoriated electro. We got the gas lens in there and we're going to have our amp set at about 50. Now I know the old one amp per thousandth but I tested this beforehand and 60 was a little bit hot for this so we're going to go with 50 for our total amp power. Let me get my gear on and we'll get at it. All right, we've got our Eastwood TIG 200 set up here. It's set for foot pedal control, DC. Now, the amperage doesn't matter here on the panel because we put the amperage control on the foot pedal. Clearance or cleaning or balance, whatever you want to call it, has no effect since we're in DC. We've got our free flow set to 0.4 seconds and our post flow set to about 6 and a quarter, 6 and a half max. Now we'll test the gas flow. And as you can see, we got about 15 CFH of argon. That should give us a good gas coverage. Nothing left to do now but weld this baby up. We're all set up to weld here. I've got some 308 stainless steel wire, 16th of an inch. Let's get on it. Add a little extra here at the end, taper off. All right. All right, fellas and ladies, there's our weld. It was a little too fast right there at the beginning, it looks like. But as you can see, we've got good color. Our heat affected zone is very small, and a lot of that has to do with a lot of that has to do with how stainless steel transmits heat, which is not very well because I just welded that less than a minute ago, and it is cool to the touch here. Let's flip it over. Look at the back side. I could have dwelled a little longer to get some better penetration, but you see, with that aluminum there. There's no sugaring. Now granted, a purge is definitely the way you want to go. But if you don't have the time or you don't have a way you can purge it, clamp a block of aluminum or copper back there. It makes a great backup keeps you from getting the back of your weld sugared. Take your heat input, keep it a little bit on the low side. Not much, just a little bit. 
and you'll get nice color. No dark blues, no purples. Uh, the darkest part of this weld is right there. That's the beginning. You see where I went. So that might have got a little warm, but see, we have blue, we have the nice straw color. Everything's looking. F All right, guys, that's it for this episode on stainless steel. I know this was just a quickie, but sometimes a quickie is all you need. Remember, for stainless steel, argon is the key. You've got to have a good gas coverage. Anytime that stainless hits the oxygen, you're going to get contamination. So turn it up a couple CFH, use a gas lens for better coverage. Select the correct filler wire for your job. Don't heat it up too much so you don't burn it because you'll burn all the chromium out of it and then it's no longer stainless steel in that area. It's just crappy steel. So don't burn it up. Go for a straw to a light blue coloring and you'll be just fine. I want to thank you for tuning in to Adventures in Welding. I want to thank our friends at Eastwood for all their generous support. I urge you to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until I see you again, don't burn your fingers.